You're tuned into Inside Lowell, Inside Lowell podcast, brought to you in part by Washington Savings Bank, serving the greater Lowell community for over 130 years. Make the switch now to Washington Savings Bank. Reverie 73, Lowell's number one cannabis shop. Elevate your cannabis experience at Reverie 73. Hafners, heating and cooling homes and businesses for nearly a century. Hafners, it kicks. And by Boston North Company, restaurant and retail solutions for your business. That's Boston North. And now, time for another Inside Lowell podcast. Inside Lowell. If Lowell is your home, this is your place. Hello again, everybody, and welcome to another Inside Lowell podcast. I am your host, Teddy Panos, coming to you here from the beautiful, spacious, luxurious Inside Lowell Studios in historic downtown Lowell. Got a lot of podcasts we're going to be recording in the coming days and weeks as we get into uh, election season here in the city of Lowell and so many big news topics uh, burning out the uh the inner tubes and the social media. So you definitely want to follow us inside Lowell.com. If Lowell is your home, this is your place. Today, I'm really excited, though, because we have uh, a couple of guests in studio <laughs> with us this morning. And you, you see one of them right there, Terry Ryan. He is the parking director for the city of Lowell. But over to the left on your screen and to Terry's right is the real star of today's podcast, and that is Flo, we're going to call her. Sure. Flo. Okay. <laughs> it's a great name. <laughs> so we're going to introduce Flo and, and see what exactly she does and what she has to say in a second. But uh, Terry, welcome. Glad to have you here. Thanks for having me. This is great. How, Appreciate it. How are things going? Uh, things are going now, well now that we have new kiosks uh, and we, they work. Uh, it, it, it's great to wake up in the morning and know that you don't have 80 of them that have crashed overnight. So uh, they are working and... Uh, Things look good with them. Right, new kiosks of the word new, of course, anything new means change, and that can be troublesome. So you've brought Flo in to kind of help explain how this works, give give people a primer on, on how these things work, how they make their lives easier, how they make your life and the city's life easier as well, uh, controlling the, the parking. Yes. And we'll talk absolutely. about a couple of uh, a couple of other things as well. But uh, let me start. So how how has the rollout gone? Has it gone according to plan? You know, they, was it Steinbeck who said sometimes the best laid plans? Well, it, yeah, it, it went pretty well. Uh, like there was some delivery issues uh, in the beginning, but uh, we 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 dismantled, removed 176 kiosks from the city, and we replaced them with 142 kiosks. We spread out a couple. There were some areas we didn't need to reinstall kiosks. Uh, 140 of them are solar powered. There are two at the early garage that are AC powered, so they have hardwired in, just like the old ones. Uh, they take cash, they take coin, they take credit card, and you can also use the app to pay for parking. Mm -hmm. uh, we can set them up for snow bands remotely. We can set up event rates. Uh, there's a wonderful back office that I'll start to get a lot more data from. Uh, and we will be able to do some small scale advertising on the screen at some point, uh, along with offering different different parking programs. Mm -hmm. uh, so for people who don't like change and wonder why you had to change, why did you have to update the entire system, it seems like, remove those 170 former kiosks, which were relatively new in the grand scheme of things, and replace them with, with this new system. So the, the, the former kiosks, they were some 15 years old, and they went down to 12 years old. So they were pretty much past their prime, to tell you the truth. Uh, the two we had at the early garage were actually machines that were bought as a demo, and because they weren't production prop pots, production units, we couldn't get replacement pots for the two at the early garage. So the decision was made uh, because the kiosks were completely unreliable, we couldn't reach out to them, we couldn't turn them on, we couldn't turn them off during snow bands, uh, we just had to make a change. I could not get pots for the, the old kiosks. Uh, and when I did, it took six to eight weeks. So these, we did an RFP with the 
uh, we got vendors and we had at least six or eight uh, replies to the RFP. We went through the RFP and Flowbird, uh, this what they call the CWT4 Plus multi key, multi use meter, uh, basically met all our needs. Uh, size wise, it's a little smaller than, than, than what was out on the street. Uh, but they just, they function well. I got good reviews back. Uh, they use them in Chicago. There are over three, 300 of them in use currently right now in Chicago. Uh, I believe they use them in Portsmouth, Portsmouth, New Hampshire, uh, and many other locations. I got great report rate references back on these units. Okay, you you mentioned the Flowbird system, hence why we're calling our second guest in studio today, Flo. Um, durability, uh, before we actually talk about how the thing works and the different ways people can utilize it, the biggest complaint with the former system and the former machines was by the time we got to six months ago, very few of them were working. Correct. And if you, you know, you, you could do it through your phone and the app, which we'll explain as well. But for those who just wanted to go pay, put a dollar in, swipe a credit card or whatever, they simply weren't working. Was that a function of that 12 to 15 year life cycle you talked about? Uh, is, are these going to kind of start to phase out at that same period? Or do these give you a little more durability from experience in other communities using them? They should be more durable uh, just because they're made of a toughest, toughest steel, a strongest steel on the outside. There are better parts on the inside and everything is modular. So it, it, in the old machines, there was a rat's nest of wires that we would have to follow through to change a pot. This is all modular, so it's plug and play. Uh, if we have a problem with the coin mech uh, that the change goes through, we can slide it out easily, pop in a new one. Same with the batteries. Uh, these batteries are guaranteed for five years. Overall, we have a one-year warranty on these on these kiosks. Uh, we really haven't had a problem, but the few small things that we did have run into, Flowbird has been responsive. Mm -hmm. So I, I think if you look down the road, these should be on, on the street for a while, but I would not anticipate using kiosks after these are gone. We will be on, people will not be using parking kiosks. 15 years down the road, they'll probably blink their eye and pay for parking. Uh -huh. You know, it'll be, it'll be a different scene, just like it's been different for a while. Okay. So, so um, you mentioned that they're solar powered. Were the old units also solar powered or did they all yeah. have to be hardwired in? So the old units, just like we had 174 of them were solar powered and two of them, the two okay. machines at the early were AC. Uh, these are much better, better solar panels. You know, they're 15 years better design. Sure. So we have not had a problem. We don't expect to have a problem. They trickle charge the battery all day long. And so when it's dark out or, you know, they're not getting the solar, the battery is being used. But then when the sun comes out, the battery gets trickle charged back up. Okay. So l let's start with the basics of them. I, it, it strikes me that the two main things that anybody needs to know, whether you're going to pay through your phone and, and the app, or whether you're going to pay at the kiosk itself, you need to know your zone mm -hmm. and you need to know your license plate. License plate number. Two important things. Every street in the city of Lowell now is a different zone. There are signs up. And when you walk up to a kiosk, it will automatically default to whatever zone you are in. So right, I'm going to zoom in here with our uh, special kiosk cam. The kiosk the cam. The kiosk cam. <laughs> so this kiosk is designed to work on John Street. And so the zone number for John Street is 1268. Okay. So if you were parking on John Street, you would just continue on with 1268. Okay. So that's an advantage. Our screen went dark. So if yep. you want to just give it a quick touch. But one of the advantages to this then on when I'm paying on my phone is when I'm on the phone app, I don't necessarily know what zone I'm in. And since my eyesight isn't great, I have to walk up and find the signs on the light poles. This tells you in the kiosk itself you what zone you are yes. currently in. And we do have stickers that we have not put on the units yet, but we do have stickers from Passport that will have the zone number on the side, so that will help also. Okay. How many zones are there in the city of Lowell? It used to be one. It was All I had yeah. to remember was 501. Mm -hmm. Now we've got 12. I, I know I usually use 1274, 1275 from Middle Merrimack. There's probably 34 zones okay. uh, each street, and we did break up bigger streets like Merrimack Street, is now divided into four zones. So you have a zone from Connie Square up to Dutton Street, and then you have a zone around City Hall, and then you have one up Merrimack Street, and then you have one that goes all the way up to Coburn. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so why did you have to do that? Explain that, I think that's an important. So we broke it up just to give us flexibility when we need to do a snow ban, when we need to do event parking, when we need to have a smaller zone to shut down the zone or change the parking rate. So we're looking at like having multiple parking rates and if I can break up the zone, uh, it gives me greater flexibility to modern, uh, change those zones. All right, the premium parking. Yeah, the, we we're about. looking at a low, moderate, and a, a high use zone. Okay, and then the other thing people have to know is you have to know your license plate. You need to know your license plate, and we suggest take a picture on your phone. Okay, what happens if I enter my license plate uh, just with one wrong number, I'm off a number or a letter? Are your uh, parking, what do we call them? Parking attendants, parking ambassadors, what do we call them? Parking enforcement officers. Parking, they need a softer, they need a kinder, gentler name. Parking <laughs> ambassadors parking uh, ambassadors i do well, I, do they I, have flexibility like okay this person obviously paid it's five of the six digits are are correct we're gonna cut them slack or how, how do you instruct them so unfortunately uh the meter officers uh they cannot take a ticket back on the street if there's a digit off we cannot allow them to take the tickets back there is an appeal process and the website is on the bottom of the ticket and we ask that people appeal the ticket and simply state Hey, here's a picture of my license plate. Here is the, the ticket, my stub. I entered the wrong number. I'm one number off. Uh, and, and typically, while this is new, those will get accepted. Uh, but you can't do that every day of the week because we can see that. And the hearing officer is looking at that. The hearing officer is not part of the parking department. He's part of the uh, city hall, uh, yeah. the legal group. Uh, so there is a review of these tickets. And, you know, we can let one slide for you know it's it's we understand you don't know your license plate but you know we will be watching them we can't we cannot accept an appeal on every one right and that but that's where using your your phone and the smartphone app mm -hmm. comes into play because uh passport has a feature where it remembers your license plate it even remembers the zones that you recently parked yes. at so you can kind of duplicate those as absolutely. well absolutely yeah the, the app is the best way to go. Okay, so let's start with the app. Uh, it, it, it really is the best way to go. Uh, like it or not, folks, as you said, Terry, it's also the wave of the future. You're going to get to the point where sticking a quarter into a meter like we used to do in the old days right. is going to be non-existent. And right. whether you like it or not, everything will have to be done by credit card and by some type of computer Correct. phone app payment. So, all right. So let people, what, what's the procedure for paying on, on your app? So you load the app, it's either, it's on the uh, Apple iPhone store or the Android store, and you just load the app on your phone, and once it's there, let's see, I have to put my glasses on because <laughs> the app's are small on my screen. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to see if I can capture, I don't know if people are going to be able to see that on my phone. Yeah, you can't see the writing, unfortunately, but it, it does pop up, uh, Teddy car uh, i have my wife's vehicle in there and then the three most recent zones that i parked in yep and i can so i can choose those and recreate the transaction boom i'm all done absolutely or hit a new session and get into my new zone get into a new zone it will also pull up your license plate number yep. okay and then it will say uh it'll allow you to pick how much time you want to park uh, up to two hours most 99 percent of the city is two hour parking mm -hmm. And so you can park anywhere up to 12, 12 minutes up to two hours, okay, in a parking zone. So we charge 30 cents for 12 minutes. So, so, so I can do, I have the flexibility to pick just a quick 12 or whatever minute stop on the smartphone uh, app because in, under the old system, I know you had to choose yeah. one hour or two hours. So on the app and the kiosk, you have to do, if you're using a credit card, there's a one hour minimum. Okay. It's a dollar fifty. And that's because we pay fees, processing fees. And if we lower that from one fifty, the city, you know, won't lose money, but it it just you know, it doesn't make it worth it for us to do that. So we're at a dollar fifty for an hour on a credit card. There, there are a number of businesses around the world that tell you there's a minimum purchase for right. credit cards. And it's exactly yes. for that, because you pay a transaction fee, a percentage to the credit card Correct. company, and if you're gonna park for 12 minutes the city you might come close to losing money actually. right we, we probably would uh, but yeah you can put 30 cents into the kiosk and get 12 minutes of parking okay um so then it's that simple 
you're done. That's it. You know, if you've used the app once, your license plates that you've entered in will come up. Your credit card would be stored on it, and you just pay for the two hours, and you're off and running. Okay. Let's get to where the real issues are, and with, like, any change, uh, this system is different than the others, and people yep. who have gone up to the meters took them five years to master the old system, and, yep. and now you change that. So let's uh, take people kind of step by step here and go back to our sure. uh, our kiosk cam, as we're going to call it. There you go. And, uh, so this is what I'm going to see when I show up to my kiosk. You'll walk up to the kiosk, and if you're parking on John Street, uh, you'll pay the... It's zone 112, 1268. Okay. All right. Oh, and if the screen is dark, there's a button there, a big green coloring, press start first. Always you can't miss step. it. Okay. Okay. So I want to park in zone 1268. So I'll hit that. I will enter my license plate number. Okay. I will hit next. And then it will ask me to pay. And I will put in 30 cents. <laughs> Are you going to be able to get this money back, by the way? Or is this going to the, is this a donation to the city treasurer's office? Okay, it will record. It's, it's a donation. <laughs> so it will record the time that I have, okay. the, the fee. That looks good. We go. And if I want to print the receipt, I can print the receipt. Okay. Important point right here. You've got the receipt. It's always a good idea to have a receipt unless you want to save the planet and not print it. But that's just for in case something happens so you forget where you park wherever but um i don't need to go back now trudge down the street or wherever i parked and put that on my no. dashboard do i this is not required to be on okay. your dashboard uh it would be nice in case you do get a ticket for some reason uh this is your proof that you paid it's good to have it's good to hold on to but not necessary and all of this information all these transactions are tracked in the back office Okay. So we have a recording of this transaction Perfect. that I can look up. So that's simple. Uh, it takes dollar bills or no? no it does. Absolutely. Contrary to popular opinion. At I've, point, I've heard that it does not take dollar bills. So though. if you look on the bottom uh, right hand me, side. Oh, I'll go to this camera here. Yeah. Right down go. here, there's a flap and it takes uh, ones and fives. Okay. Ones and fives. We have a credit card uh, device right here. So you, you can use the credit card. Uh, we put the coins in right here at the middle where you saw your receipts come out here. And if you uh, need to cancel a transaction, the change will come out here. Okay. We don't give refunds okay. and we don't make change on this machine. So okay. if you put money in, you'll get as much parking as you can for what you paid. Okay. Cancel a transaction. You said it comes out to the coin thing. Will your dollar bill come back through the uh, thing if you need to cancel a transaction? I'm not sure, to tell you the truth. We never cancel those. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, and no change given is important because I did hear. So if you want to only, if you put a dollar bill in and you only want to buy 50 cents worth of parking, you won't get change. You're not going to get back. Yeah, you won't get cents. change. Yeah. So, so if you put a dollar bill in, it will give you a dollar bill's worth of parking, whether you want it or not. Then go visit one of our other businesses in the area exactly. for those extra 15 Stop in at the Athenian corner and have I like that. Greek salad. I like that. There you go. Um, okay. Uh, credit card payments. Is it is it as simple? Simple. You can go in, enter the zone, enter your license plate number, hit next. You do it so the numbers point to the left. And you can adjust how much time. I'll okay. go up to two hours. So a fee of three dollars. You know, if we do enough of these demonstrations, we may balance the parking enterprise fund simply on your credit card. I might get miles too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, so we'll just print the receipt. Okay. We'll same thing. All right. So. Um, I did notice one uh, interesting thing there. It, it, when you first put your, your license plate in there, it said verifying plate. Is it, does it, is it tied into the Registry of Motor Vehicles? Is it? No, this is not. This just verifies it in the system, that it gets it, it records gotcha. it. And uh, I just put in random numbers. Uh, but you need to make sure that you put in your license plate and you don't put in the zone number. When it asks for a license plate number, you need to put your license plate in. Gotcha. Okay. okay. Uh, one neat thing I, I will add, that if you uh, parked on Merrimack Street... Let's see, I just have my notes. Merrimack Market, Central La Palma. Mm -hmm. 
there is an option for a free 15 minutes. Okay. Oh. Uh, so I can add in Merrimack Street, zone 17, sorry, 1274. Okay, I'll enter my license plate number. Okay, you will get the first 15 minutes free. <laughs> Okay, that's a feature that's not available on my smartphone. No, I, I have not. not found that one. No. Okay. So if I just want to run in and get a copy of Brood Awakening, and I use the Merrimack Street zone number, it'll, you know, give me the 15 oh. minutes free. I like that. I didn't, because I'd heard about that, that you get the first 15 minutes for free, but I always yeah. wondered how will the meter attendants know that I've only been there for 15 minutes if right. I haven't fed it. So it's only on the kiosks. Okay. And it's only on the zones of Central Street, Market Street, Palmer, and Central. Okay. Cool feature. Very cool and, feature there indeed. And that can be adjusted. Like you asked about why did we break up zones? That's one of the reasons. So now I could do a certain part of Merrimack Street. Maybe another section doesn't need it. I can add a small section of another street. So we will be experimenting with that. And I do track, I do get a report of who uses the 15 minutes. And we're just making sure that people aren't taking advantage of it right now. Okay, uh, we're chatting with uh, Terry Ryan. He is the parking director for the city of Lowell and we're kind of giving you a video tutorial here of the new kiosk system and how to use it. Uh, also kind of talking about the advantages of the system and how it should help the city on parking revenues. We're gonna delve into that a little bit uh, further, but we thank Terry for joining us. Uh, one other thing about Flow, as we've named this, uh, this kiosk here. Uh, she may be a Blowellian, you know, new to the city of Lowell. <laughs> However, like many longtime Lowellians, she speaks more than one language. Yes, she does. So uh, we've requested the vendor to provide multiple languages. And at this current time, if you go to the kiosk, you turn it on, you go to the bottom left and look at language. And we offer, the kiosk can be operated in English, Spanish, Portuguese, and we are still in process of working on uh, Khmer language, uh, and we expect that soon. Uh, we've been working with some local partners, uh, CMMA uh, and Flowbird, to get that translated, uh, complete, get that work completed soon. But uh, right now, uh, we have the three languages working, and I think would probably be the only kiosk, parking kiosk in the country with. My interesting okay great uh so uh, you mentioned the bottom left there's three little circle buttons there one is language one is info yes so we offer uh if you do customer service the problem with the media you want to call if there's a number that's there that's available okay. uh we talk about the hours yeah and the rates okay. things like that and then any instructions that you know, might help somebody to use the kiosk. All right, perfect. In addition to the picture up top. Okay, and the third button on the right was, if uh, i trying to remember. Oh, oh, check time. So that tells you how much time you have left. Right. And you can do that at any meter. Let's say I walk three blocks down the street, the yep. nearest meter will tell me how much time. How much time left. you have on your okay. space. Which the smartphone app uh, does as well. That's mm -hmm. one of the great things. I can always check and see, ooh, I better hurry up and get out of there. Um, <laughs> I better, Good. How about I better hurry up and refeed it or put in some more time? So city ordinance, <laughs> uh, like I said, <laughs> here's where we start to make Here enemies, we go. Terry. Yes, <laughs> yes. Continue to make enemies. <laughs> so in the city of Lowell, 99% of the space is a two-hour spot. So we do have some four hours, some eight hours uh, on the outskirts. But for the most part, it's two hours. Uh, you cannot meet a feed. And so if you try to pay a kiosk for more than two hours, it will not let you. Same on the app. Okay, so, you know, it, it, we, we will, we track that, we watch that, people try that. Uh, there are specific areas of the city that are very prone to that. Uh, we are aware of that, we're watching that, but no, you cannot park more than two hours. And if you need to move to another zone, per the ordinance, which is another street. So if you park on Middle Street for two hours, you need to move to okay. Mer Merrimack or 
market or somewhere in that area, but you have to get off that street. Okay. So here's where I've noticed the, the little glitch that it took me a, a few times to get used to. So I often tell you, if it's, if it's sunny, I park, I borrow my father's parking lot, take a walk down here, whatever. But on those rainy days, I park on Merrimack. I then, and I feed the meter, I then head somewhere else, whether it's back to the Athenian or running errands. And then I come back to Merrimack, uh, I think one time it was like three hours later, mm -hmm. and I was told I couldn't park on right. in zone one, two, seven, four, I think right. is Merrimack, Merrimack Street. Street. Uh, I was allowed to, so I had to circle the block. I found a spot on Middle Street, 1275, mm -hmm. and then I was allowed to park there. Yes. Is, so what's the time frame that you cannot park in the same zone or same street? Two hours in a day. It's a, it, it would be, a, you know, as long as the meters are working, it, it would be that day. So two hours so, on so Monday. So the rest of that day. The rest of that day. So you even cannot, though I park at 8 o'clock yep. and I come back. Two hours a day. Four, I yeah. can't do it. Okay. All right, just to, no. That's the way. That's understandable. I I know why you do it in in a perfect world. The, the, and the I understand to program it, but if you come back at four o'clock and there's plenty of open space, you'd want to park, and you yeah. think you would be able to park. But right now, the way it's set up is the ordinance has two hours in a okay. zone per day. Okay. Uh, all of this, by the way, you are working on putting on uh, actual video that you'll, I, I assume, put on the city's website. Work with LTC and uh, Diandra Silk. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, we put a little video together on how to use the kiosk, and uh, we expect to have that fairly soon. It'll be up on the website. It'll be on Inside Law and anywhere else we can get it out there yeah. we're Tell happy people. to post it on our uh youtube channel and all our other vehicles as well because uh, the, the one problem with uh my uh, my kiosk cam here is when the screen goes white i haven't i can't get the cameras to, to actually get all the you can get some of the bigger uh some of the bigger things but you can't see what's on top of the in this zone right. which is a lot of good information including what zone we are currently in so, but that will be all clearly visualized and spoken in, yes. and in multiple languages yes. as well. Absolutely. Yeah, we'll get that all taken care of. That's why it's just taken a little longer than I thought. All right. Awesome. Let's uh, let's talk about a couple of other things. Sure. Uh, you you mentioned this gives you the ability to do uh, what they think they call premium parking, which is certain zones. Let's say you you mm -hmm. luck you luck into a spot outside the Lowell Auditorium on the night that they uh, Keith Lockhart is here with the with the boston pops right you are able to charge more money at that location than so we we do have else. on the city ordinance there are certain event zones auditorium is one song of serena uh and certain streets are designated for event parking uh with the old kiosk we we should have and i think at one point they could set it up but that ability went away as the machines degraded on these new machines we can absolutely set up an event parking rate for Whatever event is going on at the auditorium, Songus Arena, or any any place that's in the ordinance, uh, and we can set up the kiosk to accept five, ten, fifteen, twenty dollars, whatever we want to charge for on street parking. We okay. did it during the folk festival; it worked pretty well. We charged five dollars on like East Merrimack Street, Brown Street, Fayette Street, and it worked. Uh, we we did get income. We did get people to comply and things like that. Okay, so it's already been implemented. I, we tried I it. Aware yes, you've tried it. And yeah, absolutely, it went pretty smoothly. Yes, it it went smoothly for the first time out of the gate. Uh -huh. uh, I certainly want to go back and talk to the folks at the auditorium and the arena and let them know the plans moving forward. I'll be doing that. Uh, but you know, it it's just. It's, it's an option. It's an ability to use the technology we have. So I'm going to do that. Okay. You mentioned 30 some odd zones. Uh, yes, roughly 30. We're, we're, so that's not all downtown. That tells me you've got others, other these meters in operation elsewhere, these kiosks in operation. We have one up on uh, the Gershom lot up by U Lowell. We have one on University Ave. Uh, we have one in the Gorham lot next to uh, the Old Towers News. We have one in that. So, but primarily they're downtown, okay. you know. So the, where most of your venues are. Most of the, yes, exactly. Et cetera. Okay. Um, is it uh, the obvious goal with all of this, and we hear it a lot of uh, many city managers going back, every parking director as well, yeah. to try to get people, especially the residents and the those who work in the downtown businesses, the owners and the employees, to park in the garages, mm -hmm. leaving the meters available for customers who want to fly in for 15 minutes, 45 minutes, right. whatever that number is. Premium parking is one of the ways that you're hoping to accomplish that. Right. Incentivizing people to use those garages as well. Uh, can you make it cheaper even for customers? Is it 
is the goal eventually to be cheaper to park in a garage short term than it is to park on the street it, it, it should be it should be cheaper to park in a garage you want people to fill the space you already have and you want the short-term parkers to park on the street if they need to but then get out we're looking at uh and what's been discussed with the finance subcommittee is uh low use parking moderate use parking and uh high demand parking uh, and, and so we would look at the parking, uh, anything under 15% usage would be low. And we might, we're looking at maybe possibly a dollar an hour. So there's some streets like Warren street mm -hmm. is pretty quiet. We may sure. do low on that one. Then we'd look at a moderate and that would be anywhere from 15% usage up to 85% usage. We'd do moderate and that might stay at the 150 where it is now. Uh, and then we'd look at anything, any street, any zone that's above 85% usage and we may go to two dollars an hour on that uh to you know that's what we're looking at and and so that would be something that i could look at and can and and maintain and monitor so when those usage change i may change those rates so i'd there'd be a three-month look back and let's say you know uh market merrimack street is busy so always over 85 but for a you know, for some reason it dropped. We could lower the rate on that. But you really, for the premium spots on Market Street, Merrimack Street, you know, if you know, you have to pay for that, and we have to make that, you know, drive people into the garages. And the garages right now are a dollar fifty. Sure, they're the same as the street. So there's not much of an incentive. You have 15 free minutes on the kiosk in yes. the park. Would you consider offering, or do you currently offer 15 free minutes, or maybe a, a half hour or an hour of free parking, say at the first floor level of a garage? We've yeah. talked about it, and we continue to talk about that and look, and look into that. Um, but we don't do that right now because you know where the garage is a dollar fifty an hour. It, it's. Uh, you kind of have to look at maybe raising the rates on the street and keeping the garage at the 150. So, you know, we've talked about different options. Uh, there are some communities that let, that start you off at a dollar and a half, mm -hmm. and on your third hour, you're paying $5 an hour. And if you stay six hours, you're paying $8 an hour. So at the end of the day, you could be paying $40 for parking. If But if that's what you choose to do, then that's what you do. Okay. Um one other change that uh, is we had a discussion as we were getting set up here that is probably coming at some point, and that is a change in the enforcement hours or the mm -hmm. parking hours. Right now, at uh, I think it says six p.m. Correct. Um, the you can park for free on the streets until the next morning mm -hmm. at eight a.m. Correct. And most of us who park downtown know that your enforcement offices are usually gone by five o'clock and you can sometimes get a I'd if like you're to lucky, know more you about that. We'll talk more about that. But, but yeah. that too is changing. You yeah. actually are have uh, already budgeted, been budgeted for a couple Correct. of extra positions. Uh but also you're expanding the hours. What what are we talking about here? Uh parking till eight, parking till ten? What are, what are we talking about? Well right about? now we're looking at going to seven o'clock. Moved from six to seven possibly eight. Uh, I am hiring additional uh, enforcement officers. I'm going to have two offices that work Tuesday through Saturday, and that those hours will be 10 to 6 p.m. And then I will be hiring two more offices, and they'll be working two in the afternoon until 10 o'clock at night. And, and, and the reason we want to bring them in is to support the residential parking in some of the neighborhoods that go until 10 o'clock. So we have a lot of people that come home from work at 8 o'clock up in the uh, residentially zoned uh, sections of the city up around U Lowell. And, you know, there are people parked there. Well, we have to enforce the residential stickers. We we, okay. we need to follow up on that. And asking police to do that, as Lord knows, they've got enough on their plate. So there's right. a parking it, issue. <laughs> right. We, we need to, you know, get that off their plate. And, you know, by having somebody up there walking the streets, checking stickers, and uh, doing what we have to do, I, I think we'll bring a little more control to the neighborhood. And, and that's what the neighbors are requesting. And that, so that's going to be a big change, uh, extending those hours of operation yes. on the meters from six till seven or yep. or eight. I will say a lot of communities do it later. Some I've been to that have been kind of traveling the country. Sometimes they enforce up till 10 o'clock. Yeah. Uh, I think the beaches go maybe till like midnight, if I'm not yeah, mistaken. Yeah, absolutely. Right? And we'll be having discussions about that. Uh, I know the the there's there's interest in the administration in doing that so uh, those continues will 
All right. Those discussions will continue. So a uh, a cynic will say that's another money grab by the city. They just want more of my money. Uh, a parking person would say this is a way to encourage residents to, especially downtown residents, to park in the garages which are there mm -hmm. and leave the street spots for people who are going to pop in for half hour, one hour to meet somebody, grab a bite to eat, etc. Absolutely. We want to try to support the business and, and get people in and out. Uh, we, we need to provide the spaces for the business that are open or at night, uh, the restaurants, things like that. Uh, we do have parking garages that are right there on Market Street, right there on Jones on street so they're they're right there they're available they're open uh so we, we hope to use them and get people off the streets there are some streets that are pretty narrow right narrow at night and it would be nice to you know if we can get, make sure that the fire trucks get down and can turn the corners and things like that Okay. The other option is to not allow overnight parking on certain streets, in particular downtown streets. It has been done in the past mm -hmm. during winter yep. months. It helps with snow removal. But I know that uh, that's been discussed, and any time it does, man, do people... <laughs> Get yes. angry about that. That's so, another reason to get angry at parking. So, so perhaps the 8 p.m. Uh, or, or even 10 p.m. if you eventually decide to go later, yes. that may accomplish the same thing uh, without being yeah, as drastic. It, 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 it's absolutely. There's conversations and there's compromise and the discussions that have to happen. Uh, it, it's parking. It's very important. It's not a money grab. Uh, we uh are, are looking at rates increases things like that because we do have to pay the mortgages on these garages and we are looking at other uh areas of revenue outside of the garage rates okay you know? and uh, you mentioned rates one of the questions i had thank you for reminding me was when you say you can charge more for an event or you can start to kind of change depending on what you start to see statistically mm -hmm. you can make uh, changes um is that something that is at your discretion or will any change in parking rates designation of an area as a high traffic area or moving it down away from hundred is that all have to be passed by the city council is this ordinance based or yeah. do you as the parking director have certain flexibility to make these decisions on your own right now what we're talking about is the ordinance change based uh that will give me the the ability to make changes to these zones we're also looking at similar changes to the garages because there are certain garages that are full and if i can go off and off offer a lower rate at a garage that isn't full then that's what i want to do because I want to give the people the ability, if they don't mind walking a block or two, they can pay 50 cents less, less an hour for parking and day after day that will add up. So, uh, you know, that's what I want to be able to do. And that's what we're moving towards. And we're moving that direction. <laughs> Wise ass alert. <laughs> people that want to walk a block or two. I have heard the myth that they exist. I've once heard this about this fairy tale land called the walkable city where nobody had a car and you didn't have a need for garages and people lived there because they just wanted to walk everywhere, not have to drive anywhere. And yet every new resident who comes downtown comes with one, two, three cars. <laughs> so I, I'm sorry, that's an editorial comment. That's there. all right. Same thing. One, one, or two, three, four <laughs> pass cards. That's great. I'll sell them to them. So, uh, okay. you know, but right. I, 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 you know, I'm looking at providing the flexibility to get the garages full uh, and, and, and provide people options on parking. All right. Well, well, I'm going to stay away from everything else you just <laughs> asked me about. A <laughs> lot, of, lot of good info there. I hope it helps clear up some questions that folks might have, and I hope they refer to it uh, if they need to from time to time. Terry Ryan, Parking Director for the City of Lowell, thank you for coming on in. Absolutely. And thank you for, uh, for bringing in Flo, our first uh, inanimate object other than Batch, to be a, to be a guest on an Inside Low podcast. And uh, it helped us create the kiosk cam as well. So thank you. Absolutely. Terry. Thanks for having really me. Appreciate it. Pleasure's all ours. And thank all of you for watching as well. This has been another Inside Lowell podcast. Thank you to our sponsors for helping make it possible. Washington Savings Bank, Boston North Company, Thank you to our friends at Hafner's. It kicks, they kick, as you can see from the sign behind me. And of course, Reverie 73, Lowell's number one cannabis shop, is voted by the readers of Boston.com. And of course, thank you for joining us as well as we like to say inside Lowell. If Lowell is your home, this is your place. Till next time, stay safe, everybody.